Good morning, church. I'm so glad to be here this morning with you, celebrating our fellowship. We're celebrating communion Sunday. So as a family, we are gathered in remembrance of what Christ has done. We thank you for his goodness and his mercy of your week. And the blessing that we had to spend time with Sister May Scott uh, last week, she went on to glory. She's in glory. She was here last Sunday with us. That's right. And we had food and a meal with us. But she's in glory. Amen. 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 She has she has run her race. Come on now. And she is there in the presence of the Lord. And I'm just so thankful that once again you're back in fellowship with one another. But we are in one. God's presence to be here. We are inviting him, his presence, right now in our body right now. So we thank you, Sister Barbara Joyce and Angel, Brother Herb, and the Scott family. I don't know everyone's name. Brother Tim, Adrian, <laughs> Charisma. We are thankful for you being a part of our body. I'm thankful for what Sister May meant to me in my life. She was a deaconess, a missionary, and she told us that Jesus was the only way. And um, the thing that I, remember, I will always remember about her is that she was the same all the time. Her message was, we need Jesus. Y'all, we need Jesus. And, there's, and, and Jesus was her all in all. And I just thank you. I remember uh, Sunday night services where we would have testimony service, and we would be able to take, look like a hymn scene, because we could call out the numbers in the hymnal and sing them. Number 63, 129, sing the light. <laughs> On Christ the solid rock, I stand. All of that was part of my upbringing, and getting me closer to Jesus Christ. So I'm glad you're here with me today. Glad you're here with the Curse of Kingdom Outreach Fellowship to be able to remember, to celebrate, and to honor him. And you know what? When the role is called up yonder, I want to be there. Okay. All right? Um, I remember the song, All Fly Away. All of those are ways that we honor the work that we're doing here. I would, I would say just the work. I'll say the rolling that we're doing here in order to be in his presence right. one day, okay? So we thank God for that. And so I'm so glad that we are here doing that. Okay, we also have another family uh, that is grieving the loss of a loved one. The Vincent family, Lisa uh, Vincent, um, he also experienced a transition as well. He was around 36 years old, and he was a part of City Impact which was the uh, ministry that, that really took its launch from Christ's Temple, but other churches in the area around Christ's Temple mission. And so we're praying for his family, his children, his brothers, his sisters, as they're grieving the loss of their loved one as well. Um, as I was just kind of just thinking about um, just the process of someone who has been so strong and present in our families, going on to another place, we who are left behind sometimes struggle to get it right. How do we continue on? What does that look like? How do we love each other when they were the ones that are calling us to love and be concerned and to pray for one another? We gotta continue on. And that's where we that are here, that are left, we need to continue to stay focused on Jesus. And so this song came to me, and it's relevant because we are in the Potter's house. We are in God's house. And this song is called The Potter's House by Tremaine Hawkins. And it, and it goes, in case you have fallen by the wayside of life, your dreams and vision shattered, you're all broken inside. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter's house to put you back together again. Amen. 
Oh, the potter wants to put you back together again. In case your situation has turned upside down, you don't, you, and all that you've accomplished is now on the ground. You don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. My Lord. The potter wants to put you back together again. The potter wants to put you back together again. And if you have any doubt who that potter is, it's Jesus Christ. He can take the broken fragments of our life and put us back together again. Remember that he is our source. He is the one that will keep the love of Jesus Christ flowing in our hearts through heartbreak, through disappointments, through depression. He is the one that's going to keep us back. Amen? So we're all been touched by this, this going home with someone and losing someone or someone who has not walked in the way that we want them to be walking in the Lord. And so that grieving and that coming together in this place is what it's all about. He has the hope that we need that will keep us close together. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. I'm going to read to you from, um, I'm going to go with Psalm 90. And I am going to start there um, with verse 10. The length of our days is 70 years or 80, if we have the strength. Yet their span is but trouble and sorrow, for they quickly pass and we fly away. Who knows the power of your anger? For your wrath is as great as the fear that is due you. Teach us, Lord, to number our days of life. That we may gain a heart of wisdom. And I'm going to stop there. So I thank God for this opportunity to stand before you and give God honor and glory. He kept us from one week to the other. And we are here. So let us rejoice and praise and worship Him today. Um, I'm going to move on to our prayer request. Um, I'm going to uh, just shout out for all of those who prayed for my brother. We hadn't heard from him in months. And we heard from him last week. We actually had to uh, go to the, the law enforcement there in Washington State just to see, do a well check. And then he called us and he was like, y'all know I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus him. Yes, that's exactly how I felt. I'm like, oh, irritation with my mom would say. <laughs> so keep him in prayer. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you, Carlene is here after having surgery. A week or so ago, continue to pray for her friend, um, R.D. Uh, he is recovering in, in Madonna, and he still needs some time to recover with medication and uh, recovery and therapy, so keep him in prayer. I'm just praying that God will just help those that are experiencing health diagnosis, that God will just follow you through the treatment that you will be walking through and know that God is in control of that. So I also want to remind us women and some men that this is a breast cancer awareness month. Get your examinations, okay? It's important. We need you to stay here. We need you to be here in the name of Jesus. Pray for my sister-in-law, Gwen. She's having some other uh, health complications and her daughter, Jessica, who's staying with us. And so now, Heavenly Father, we just thank you for your goodness and your mercy today, Lord. We thank you that we can stand before you, Lord, and fellowship as a family, Lord, as we come to the communion table, Lord, just in remembrance that this is not the end, Lord Jesus, but that we're fellowship in remembrance of you, Lord, that we will have our heavenly dinner and presence be in your presence, Lord Jesus, one day, one day when you have already called that that day into account for us, Lord. We thank you, Jesus, for the, the uh, elders that have gone before us. We thank you for Sister May Scott, Lord, that she is in your presence, Lord, today, Lord, no longer in pain, Lord Jesus, or discomfort, Lord, she's in your presence, and she's perfect in your presence, Lord. We also pray for you, Sister, and his family, Lord, as they're walking through a hard time and place as well, Lord. Just be with that family, Lord, and all of us that are grieving a loss in our homes and in our lives, Lord Jesus, where you are the one that can continue to keep our 
our home and our eyes focused on you for our strength, Father God. And then, Lord, that you would show us how to continue to love and accept one another, Lord, and walk together in love, Lord Jesus, as families, Lord Jesus, dealing with all the things that we do, doing life, Lord. We love you and we praise you, Lord. We thank you for all who will give, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for the way that you continue to use this church of body to give back to the community and give back to our body, Father. We love you today, Lord. Thank you for coming to earth, Lord Jesus, to experience what we experience, Lord Jesus, God with us, and Lord, you died for us, Lord, the perfect man who did the healing, Lord Jesus. Oh, Jesus, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for feeding oh, the ten thousands and the five thousands, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you want to do today through our pastor, Lord Jesus, that you have already equipped him and prepared him for giving this message out, Lord. May our hearts be ready to receive it, Lord, as we move on to worship and, and the word. In Jesus' name we pray.
was betrayed. He took bread and he said, he broke it and said, take this and eat. This is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake together. He'll always get the 
glory. Do I have a witness in here this morning? He'll get the glory, which is the key. Yeah, you'll be blessed, but he will, you'll be glorified, which is what really, really matters. And I thank God for that today. Let me just give you, before I get to the text, just a couple things for your, for your mind to think about. As I was thinking about even just a, a couple of days ago. There, there's several questions, and again, I'll be speaking at Jesus' funeral as well, and, and asking these same questions. I want you to consider four things that I, that, that I want to prove your mind today. The, what I call the questions of life. The first of those questions is the question of origin. Where did I come from? The second is the question of meaning. What's my purpose? The third is the question of morality. How do I know the difference between what's right and what's wrong? And the last is the question of destiny. What happens to me when I die? Huh? So everybody has to answer these questions all the time. And depending on what your worldview is, you have to ask yourself, so where did I come from? Was there, was there nothing? And then all of a sudden there was something? Or was there, as the scriptures say, in the beginning, God? Huh? Do I start there? And if I can start there, then maybe the second question, the question of, of meaning, has even more meaning. Because now I know where my purpose lies. Huh? Jesus came with a purpose. He came to do the will of the Father. He even said that my food is to do the will of the one who sent me. Huh? So when you realize that you came from, from God and that he has a purpose for your life, then you can get somewhere. And the longer it takes for you to realize that, the longer it takes for you to get on track. You'll try this and you'll try that. You'll do this and you'll do that. You'll serve yourself instead of serving God, which is what all most of us have done. The third question is really challenging. The question of morality. How do I get to know the difference between right and wrong? Now, we, we, we presume that our parents are the ones who are teaching us those things, right? Maybe the school system, some other, but what if they don't know? And where are they getting the foundation for what is right? These kids nowadays, go, well, how do you know? Where'd you get that from? Huh? Well, I'm here to tell you, sometimes you know right. The challenge isn't just to know right, but the challenge is to do right. And so I would say, like the sister today, that the foundation for doing right was right here in the scriptures. It was right here in the scriptures. So if you're looking for a guide, don't look in a cookbook. Don't look in a mechanics manual. Look in the Bible. Huh? And I'm here to tell you, I have a witness here who can say, if I had gleaned the Bible and knew more about it, and did what he said, I would not have had the trouble that I had in my life. Anybody? I would not have experienced the trouble that I experienced if I had just heeded what the word had said. If I had believed it. Lastly, okay, you know the difference between right and wrong. It's not just to know. It's another thing. There's a difference between knowledge and wisdom. Most of us know a lot. The question is, what do we do with it? Wisdom. Lastly, the question of destiny. And again, I don't want to be too morbid about it, but it's the truth of our life. All of us are going to go this way one day. We're going to leave here. The old saints used to call it pilgrim. What? Passing through. Mm -hmm. huh? And so with that said, what happens to us when we die? <coughs> do, do, do we turn into a fire hydrant? Do we come back as a, a potted plant? <laughs> or, or, or do we go, are we absent from the body? And present with the Lord. Now, some will say, well, Pastor, y'all just say that to make yourself feel good. Well, guess what? One day you're going to find out. Uh, what, you, you can roll the dice. For all you dice rollers in here. From back in the day, of course. Not, not, not this week. Not this week. I ain't talking about this week. I'll be back in the day. You can come up here and test later. But we all have to consider these questions, friend. We do. And so when we look at the text of 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we, 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 we referenced it uh, in, in last week, we referenced it before, but, but I want to take us through it as, as Paul is speaking to his protege, Timothy. And so when we think about the Christian life, we think about it in four dimensions. 
First of all, it's a gift. Secondly, it's a race. It's a race. It's not a strength, it's a marathon. It's a battle. Because we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, but with principalities and powers. And let me just say this off script. One of the most challenging times of battle for a family is when somebody passes. When somebody passes. People, normal people who, who normally are good, nice, and, and cooperative people turn into somebody you don't even know. There's an insurance money. There's, there's, there's mama this, there's daddy's that. And then all of a sudden, they start acting a punk fool. It's a battle. And, and the question that becomes, for those of you who know the Lord, how do you hold fast to what the foundation of your faith in the midst of that foolishness? How do you, how do you model Jesus in the midst of that? Huh? To them, toward them. How do you love them in spite of it? It's a tough thing. I know they're easy. It's a gift. It's a race. It's a battle. And lastly, it's an assignment. If you read the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation, you'll find out that God gave people things to do. He gave them instruction. He said, take this path, not that path. Abraham, leave your father and go to a place I'll show you. Noah, build an ark. David, slay a giant. Again and again and again. He gave assignments. So the question is, what's your assignment? Sister Mary already wrote her course. She's finished the race. She's kept the faith. Read the three passages fast. Come on. One through eight. Second Timothy 4. Paul says to me, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, listen, listen. Who will, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearance? So there is a, so let me just ask you, you young folks out here, and you even you old folks, have you, have you heard somebody say, don't judge, only God will judge me. Only God can judge me. Huh? Have you heard? Yes. Only God can judge me. Well, guess what? God will judge you. The question is, how will he judge you? And on what basis will he judge you? And the only question he wants to ask you is, what have you done with my son? Do you know him? What, did you receive his sacrifice on the cross for you? Were you willing to accept him as your Lord and your Savior? No. I say to some of you at birth, said, you don't ever want to put yourself in front of a human judge. You don't know what he is she going to give you. You don't know what side of the bed they woke up on. You don't know that God made a step on attack or nothing. But guess what? The Bible says God will judge the living, and he's going to judge the dead. He says to Timothy, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. And that's what we have to do. We have to preach the truth of this word. Not, a, not opinion, not any window, not conjecture, not anything, not Pastor Harris's worldview. He says to Timothy, the truth of what I have to do, preach the word. Stay with it. Don't, put, don't add nothing to it and don't take nothing away. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, you know, that's the challenge we're trying to do. Rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Listen, we said it last week. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. People don't want to hear what the preacher has to say. People don't want to come into a place like this in fellowship because they think it's irrelevant. It's not connecting with me. Y'all don't, don't do enough lights and smoke and mirrors and all that kind of stuff. Y'all don't do enough of that. It ain't exciting. It's not like a concert. Should be. So the question is, what are you here for? You, you, you want to hear it. But Sister May, you heard it from her. You heard it from her, but you want to hear it or not. Huh? And my prayer is that it, it didn't go in one ear, not the other. That you would hold fast to what she shared with you. But according to your own desire, because of their itching ears, they will keep up for themselves teachers. They'll find people who preach what they want to preach. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn it aside to faith. But you be watchful in all things. Endure affliction. What, what, is, what is Paul saying to Timothy? There, there's some hard times coming, Timothy, if you do what I'm telling you to do. Anybody here ever had some hard times? Anybody here ever been afflicted? Have you ever had any pain? Huh? <laughs> he says, Timothy, if you do what I'm telling you to do, you're going to endure some hardship. 
Do the work of the evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. And it goes back to purpose again. Paul saying to Timothy, you got a purpose. Do it. Do it for the glory of God. And so for some of you in here who are struggling with purpose, struggling with the thing that you were born to do, born to do, that nobody can do but you. Is that what you're seeking? Or are we just, just fleshing, just running around? I'm here to tell you today that, that, that Christ can give you some purpose. He can give you some purpose. And now, Tim, Paul was saying to Timothy at the end of his ministry, it, he's, he's at the end. He knows his time is, is numbered, his days are numbered. And he knows that he's about to come to an end. That's why he's trying to bring somebody along. That's the challenge of our lives. Is who, what legacy are we leaving for other people? What are we teaching? What can they imitate by looking at our lives? Huh? Is it just all saltiness and foolishness? Or is it something they can really hold on to? And so some of you, as you're thinking about Sister May, maybe a quick, something, some quote or some quick or some verses, from, from verse she said, something she said regularly that just kind of re reverberates in your mind. Oh, Sister May, Mom, Grandma used to say this all the time. Grandma used to do this all the time. And she didn't just do it just so it would pass in your mind now. She did it so it's something you can hold on to. But not only her, the question is, what legacy, like her, are you leaving? What will, we, what will you be remembered for? Who can speak kindly of you when you are in that time box? Because it's one per person. Everybody's going that way. And so he says in verse 6, I'm already being poured out. He said, it's all coming out of me now. Like a dream offering. And the time of my departure is at hand. He knows that the end is near. Isn't that interesting? It's interesting to know that your time is, is near. And I've, I've, I've been in the hospital, and I've been in, in hospice, and I've been in places where, where the person knew that their last, last breath was, was coming within them. It's a challenging place to be. And Paul saying to Timothy, I know that I'm almost done. But then he says in verse 7 of 2 Timothy 4, I have fought the good fight. Mm -hmm. Huh? Know that battle I was talking about? Paul says, because you all got to remember who Paul was when he was Saul. He was someone who was against Christians. He was killing Christians. He was fighting against God. He didn't want folks to know Jesus. And he was, and he was intentional about it. And like many of us in this room, I know I got one of us here who say, I thank God at the end of the second of my life. Yes. I thank God that he took me a different route than I had planned to go. Yes. Do I have one witness in here? Yes. Huh? I was headed this way, and God said, no, this way. The intersection, God stopped the direction I was going and said, now, now it's time to detour in the way I need you to go. You know better. Now do better. Follow me. My principle. Will my and so he says, I fought the good fight. Hey, Timothy, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I'm done. And I have kept the faith all the way to the end. Because sometimes, friends, it's challenging sometimes when you are a person of faith. Because sometimes your faith wanes. Sometimes you don't know what you lose confidence sometimes. This is true. You wonder why bad things happen to good people. But it's not just about being a good people. It's a good person. It's about being God's person. Some folks think they're going to get in. See, when the challenge when you talk to folks about these services, everybody thinks their loved one's going to heaven. Everybody, I don't care how they live, they get the only way to heaven. And everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. Huh? I don't care how they live, they think they want to heaven. Now, I'm going to be careful because I, I, can't, I can't make that determination for you, but I know what the requirements are because they're right here in the scripture. And it's a simple script verse, it's only the most popular verse ever. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, and whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That's it. Do you believe in him? In, in Jesus Christ? I didn't always. I'm going to just tell you the truth. Paul says to Timothy, there's a reward. It's, it wasn't my anticipation. 
expectation, but my expectation, but I don't really get it. He says in verse 8 of 2 Timothy 4, Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge. You talking about, you want a judge that's going to judge you rightly? It's, the, it's Christ who will judge you rightly. God will judge you rightly. The righteous judge will give me on that day, and not only to me. Oh, Paul says, it ain't just me. He says, to all who love, who loved his appearance. So he says, I'm going to get it. But guess what? Timothy, it's not just for me. Anybody else who loves Jesus can get this crown as well. No, last week I saw Sister May, but she was eating. She was in a wheelchair. Let me ask you some of you a question. You think she's in a wheelchair now? Anybody here ever see Sister May dance? Well, if you didn't see her dance, get to the other side. Because she's dancing now. Huh? In the arms of her Savior. In the arms of the place that she wanted to be. Huh? Jesus says, I go to a place to prepare a place for you. If you're in me. Huh? And so you remember that old house used to have a right corner for Christ, huh? That little right there in the shack. That was full of God knows what. Huh? Some of y'all had to get that place out, didn't you? Well, guess what? Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. Yes, right. Huh? And hey, you don't say that in that? Hey! I never saw a living house authority to get me a place. Yes, right. Jesus, I already got your place made. <laughs> Come on in. You want one story, two story. I done already decorated it for you. Amen. You ain't got to put nothing in there. Yes. Praise you, Jesus.
TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and the like. Is it doing you really any good? Or is it just wasting your time? Well, guess what? There's two things in this life you rarely get back. The first is time. And the second, oftentimes, is opportunity. But you know what? Time is for sure. You don't get that back. But guess what? You can get another opportunity. And you have the opportunity today. For all the messages you have heard about Christ, today, you can say, Pastor, I think I'm ready to come on in. I think I'm finally ready to believe. So what Sister May did for me is to help me to see somebody who really, really loved Jesus. Okay. And if I could just follow her example, I can get in. Because I can believe. So that's the prayer I wanted to pray today for you and for myself. That we continue to finish this race, those of you who believe, that we keep the faith. Because in challenging times like we're in, that's when foolishness happens. That's where the enemy wants to come in and break us apart. Because somebody gets a little bit too selfish and too self-serving. Let's, let's, let's fight that. Then we might stay together and not go apart. Amen? Amen. Pray with me this morning. Father God, I thank you and I praise you for these, your people here today. I thank you for this communion service, this opportunity to acknowledge what you have done, Jesus. And I pray today for your comfort for this family and for all of us who love Sister May Scott. And I know today, for all that she lived and, and breathed and did, she did it for your glory. Because when she came to Christ, it changed her. It changed not only the way what she did, it changed how she did it. It, it changed not only where she wanted to go, but where she went. And I thank you that she found a home with with Pastor Trey Lowe and Sister Margaret in Christ Temple. And she found brothers and sisters with whom she could commune and, and call family. And I thank you that she raised her children in that place as well. Yeah, yeah. That they might live the legacy that she laid down foundationally. And I thank you, Lord, that her grandchildren got to see it, and her great grandchildren got to see it as well. Yeah, yeah. But seeing it is one thing. But embracing it is another. So I pray today for that unbeliever among us, that one who's yet to bow the knee to Christ, that they would say today, see today, what Jesus said about himself in John 14, that I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one will see the Father except through me. And so today in this place, I pray for saints and sinner alike. And I pray today that someone who has heard this message yet again would be willing to say, Pastor, I'm ready to answer those questions. I believe that I came from God. I believe he has a purpose for my life. I believe that he is the author of what's right and what's wrong. And my destiny in Christ is where he is. And so I pray that that's you today. Would you join me in the first step, just the first step toward destiny by saying to you, Father, I come to you today just as I am. I admit today that I'm a sinner. I admit today that I've done things that are against your law, your precepts, and your principles. I acknowledge today beyond the voice of a mere man, there's a spirit, the spirit of God is speaking through him to me. And it has touched my heart. I'm willing to acknowledge today that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. And like the Apostle Paul, who went from Saul to Paul as he was intersected on the Damascus Road, I'm willing to agree with God that Jesus is my Savior. He died just for me. And today, I accept that. Today, I accept him, knowing that he has accepted me. Knowing that I'm not choosing him, he's already chosen me. I say yes to him. That I may walk with him all the days of my life. And not only that, that I might find fellowship among the people of God. 
reading and understanding and following the word of God all the days of my life, whatever those days might be. And so today, I say yes to Jesus as my Savior and as my Lord, my guide, as the one who helps me to fulfill the purpose for which I was born. This is my desire today, my humble prayer, as a first step toward the destiny of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. And friend, if you took that first step, I want you to let me know. Let somebody know. You can tell me. You can tell somebody. But we want to make sure that you know that's the first step. We want to make sure that you get baptized. And we want to make sure that you, you begin to walk in the Word and the truth of it. That your destiny will be certain. And one day, when you get to the other side, You'll look through the clouds and guess what you'll see? <laughs> Not in a wheelchair anymore. Sister Mary, say, welcome. This was my legacy. This was my prayer for you. Amen? Thank you. Don't turn 